Sod turned for work on 10.8 million US dollar improvement project at Bishop's College in Kariakou. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020, I am Rakesha St. Louis. The government of Grenada continues to demonstrate its commitment to improving school infrastructure across the country. On Tuesday, the sword was turned for the start of the U.S. $10.8 million project to refurbish Bishop's College in Kariakou. The work under the Grenada Educational Enhancement Project, GEEP, will entail construction of a two-story multi-science block, reconstruction of the administrative wing, and refurbishment of the existing building. In a message shared at Tuesday's event, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell said, government remains committed to ensuring that students are provided with an environment that is conducive to learning. Young people are recognized globally as the leaders of tomorrow, and therefore, we must ensure that they are provided with an opportunity to learn and grow in an environment that will appropriately nurture them to become the leaders we want them to be. Dr. Mitchell urged teachers, staff, and students, along with parents, to look past the inconveniences that may arise during the rehabilitation work because these will pale in comparison to the potential benefits to be derived from the upgraded school. The Prime Minister noted that in addition to improving school infrastructure, projects such as these create much-needed employment opportunities. As countries all over the world continue to battle with the economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic, the employment generated by projects become even more important. In the midst of growing unemployment in various sectors, the jobs created by these projects provide a beacon of hope for persons who may have been otherwise unemployed. Therefore, as part of our strategy to re help revitalize the local economy and create employment, government is refocusing its commitment to the implementation of capital projects such as these. Dr. Mitchell said it's a win-win situation. Jobs are created and workers are better able to provide for their families. The country's school infrastructure is improved, educators are more motivated to teach, and students benefit from enhanced learning environments. Foreign Affairs Minister Honorable Peter David says government is anticipating the implementation of the new diaspora policy, which will promote the involvement of Grenadians overseas in the development of the country. On Tuesday, Minister David made the announcement during the government's weekly post-cabinet media brief. The document has been funded and developed by the International Organization for Migration. Minister David said a draft policy document was submitted to the overseas communities for discussion and to cabinet to be reviewed. He emphasized that the diaspora should be seen equally for its importance to development initiatives as it is seen for remittances. The issue of diaspora involvement, we remain committed to ensure that the diaspora is involved in the development of this country. The diaspora is not only important if we want them to send some stuff to us. That is important. Remittances are extremely important uh, to our budget and to the maintenance of, 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 of many persons in Grenada. But it is not the only thing. The diaspora must become involved in the development of this country in several other ways. And as I said before, and I repeat, not, not only materially, but with respect to their ideas. I repeat again, my view of the diaspora as a 16th constituency, they are extremely important, though they do not have voting rights, uh, staying in the diaspora and voting, they, they have the right to involvement in the development of this country. And we are, through this diaspora policy, trying to find a mechanism that does not make it dependent on any particular government or any particular person. 
Grenadians in the diaspora will soon have a direct contact on Ireland, where concerns and ideas can be shared and contributions can be made. The government is hopeful that by year-end, the draft document will become government's policy on diaspora. We will be establishing an office of the diaspora in St. George's where persons can go to speak about diaspora issues. We will be establishing that office. We are currently in talks uh, with, with a particular ministry in that regard. We will make an announcement in due course, but we will put the infrastructure in place and the policy in place to ensure that the diaspora remains an integral part, but not doing what we've always done to find new ways of getting them involved in development. For example, there's no, there's no reason why the diaspora should not be involved in actual development projects. There's no reason why the diaspora cannot come together or do it individually or collectively to work on development projects. They are as important as any other investor in coming into Grenada. Continuing the news, Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell has welcomed Monday's announcement by Sandals that close to 600 team members have returned to work. Over the next few weeks, the workers will be trained in Sandals premium protocols of cleanliness ahead of the planned reopening of the luxury resort on October 1st, 2020. The protocols, according to the Sandals press release, ensure the strictest health and hygiene guidelines and have allowed the company to successfully reopen several other resorts in Antigua, Jamaica, St. Lucia and Barbados. At a meeting with top Sandals executives on Sunday, Dr. Mitchell was appraised of the hotel's plans and he welcomed the workers' return to work. Dr. Mitchell said, and I quote, This is exciting news for Grenada. We look forward to the reopening of the hotel and to resume welcoming visitors to our shores. This will largely signal the resumption of activity in the tourism sector, which has been particularly hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. What is even more heartwarming is that hundreds of our nationals are returning to work after six months. This is good news on a personal level for these employees and for the suppliers of goods and services who benefit indirectly from the hotel's operations. On a wider scale, it is also good news for the country and I am truly heartened by this announcement. Unquote. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. The house was shaking, shaking. Then said the story here, babe. Crack, 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 crack. And the roof had gone. Man, I was so scared, I nearly wet myself. Only those who have lived it can truly understand the devastating fury of a hurricane's wind. The house across the road just get up and roll over. Hurricane force wind. It's a hazard. Hazards. Take control. Reduce your loss. You can hurricane proof your home. For example, Make your roof more wind resistant by using screws instead of nails in its construction. Find out more about hurricane force winds and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from the National Disaster Management Agency and Sidera. Welcome back. The Grenada Food and Nutrition Council last week engaged approximately 20 officers of the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands and the Climate Smart and Rural Enterprise Program, SIAP, educating them on the nutrient contents, benefits, and utilization of selected crops in the preparation and consumption of healthy meals. This training is part of the knowledge transfer process by the organization to help families across Grenada understand the importance of concise nutrition, meal planning on the crops provided in the COVID-19 Backyard Garden Kit. The preparation session that we conducted in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture and the SIEP program. This would provide participants with information because the whole thing is the training of trainers. We are training these extension officers and the SIEP workers to get information on the nutritional benefits of the items that were given, the planting items that was given to the beneficiaries, so they know what it contains and how to prepare and preserve these items. And as a result, we hope that people would eat what they, grow what they eat and eat what they grow. That's Jesse Douglas, Community Nutrition Supervisor at the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council.
Under the ministry's backyard gardening program, over 500 vulnerable households in Grenada will receive assistance. A program of such magnitude will help to alleviate hunger, reduce levels of imported foods, and increase the amount of local food consumed. The officers explain how they were able to benefit from the training. We will be better able to advise the beneficiaries of the, um, the SIEP um, program into how they can use the various vegetables and staples and so on. It speaks to a sense of being local and sticking with everything that you have grown in your country. And I think people would more be, I'd say, inclined to participate in something like that, into um, having these things at home, introducing it to their children and so. Um, it cuts off on expenses, so immediately as people hear that, it's something that they'd want to be into. The Food and Nutrition Council is currently holding a similar training on the utilization of selected agricultural crops on the sister isle of Kariku. Finally, in the news, two women were among the graduates of a two-week aircraft rescue and firefighting training at the Morris Bishop International Airport. 30 trainees received certificates on completion of the exercise held at the training room at the airport. It is an honor to address you once again, this time at your graduation ceremony. I am sure it has been a long and hard-working two weeks of training. Let me thank immensely the facilitators of the RGPF, my HR team and members of our operations team who work tirelessly to complete this task. To the graduates today, The most influential step in your life is what you're taking today. Mrs. Wendy Francette Williams, General Manager at the Grenada Airport Authority. Inspector Mark St. Paul, the officer in charge of the fire department at the airport, said the training, which consists of one week theoretical and one week practical work, is vital to the RGPF's drive towards ensuring qualification. Among us all, there are competent and qualified individuals, firefighters, that can deliver the goods. And while we were pondering as to where we're going to get instructors from, where we're going to get people to conduct the training and provide that material, that literature, and, and so on. We had to inform the CEO and her team that we are competent enough and we have, we do have the skilled and the expertise within the fire department and the RGTF to perform these tasks. That story just ended the national report for today, Tuesday, September 22nd. Let's recap the top story. SOD turned for work on 10.8 million US dollar improvement project at Bishop's College in Kariku. On behalf of the entire news and production team here at the Government Information Service, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.